Hi, welcome to my build of a Piper Cub J3. I'm now going to be starting to fit out uh, all the control linkages, uh, the electronics, um, finding a place for the battery and the receiver. Um, and I feel like I need to be a little bit of a ma magician really to, um, to try and get this, this lot in. Um, it's going to be quite a, a tight squeeze. Um, I've got two large servos to go in here and a smaller servo for the throttle at the front. It's going to be um, a linkage through to a GP25 Thunder Tiger. Um, I've got a, um, a Flysky receiver. Uh, I've always used Flysky right from when I first started, mainly because it was uh, cheap. But I've always had great success with it, never had any problems. Um, so I'm just carrying on using it, I'm quite happy with it. Um, I've got a Fataba switch, um, a really important part of any build. If you have problems with your switch, it can all go horribly wrong in mid-air, you can just totally lose control. So I think it's worth paying that little bit extra for a good quality switch. And here we have a sensor which will connect to the, um, to the receiver and give me a warning if the, uh, if the battery level becomes low. Um, I mean it's something I started off doing with my electrics, uh, my electric um, planes when I first started flying so that I knew when the LiPo battery was getting down and I've just thought it's a really good idea to have in this even though it's a nitro plane um, if my uh, 5 cell uh, nickel metal hydride battery goes too low I will lose everything so putting a a sensor in, it's extremely cheap, um, very light, so I can't see the reason. To me it's a no-brainer, um, so I'll put that in. Okay, well I've been working now on, uh, on the linkages and mounting the servos and, and the battery tray, if you like. Um, and I'm quite pleased with, with how it's gone and I, I'm ready to start gluing things in now and fixing things a little bit more permanently. Um, the servos uh, mounted on this 3mm ply and actually that's pretty rigid. I, I thought I might have to stiffen it. Um, I have added a, an extra piece uh, where the screws are um, just to give a little bit of 6mm, uh, um, a little bit of thickness there for the screws to fix in. And also these are for the rudder and the elevator. Uh, this is for the, um, the throttle, um, slightly smaller servo. Um, but I've also put in little mounts there to thicken that up. I've put these on the top surface just to give a little bit of clearance there with these, these servos and also it brings it up to a better, better line to link in through to the, uh, to the throttle. So this will uh, just slot in. Um, it will eventually glue, uh, sorry, screw in, uh, but I won't do that until, <coughs> excuse me, um, <coughs> until um, I've actually covered it. It'll be one of the final final jobs. Uh, the screws that I've used um, to fix in these servos are a revelation to me. Um, something I bought recently from the UK, um, some hex heads, two mil hex heads servo screws uh, with a sort of integral washer. Um, they're a really nice um, tight fit on a 2mm um, uh, hex screwdriver and they are brilliant for putting in um, putting servos in. You can reach in, uh, they don't wobble around. In the past I've always made a mess of, of screwing servos in and it's a job, it's one of the very few jobs that I, I didn't like using uh, traditional screw heads um, but these make it, these are just lovely and they're lovely and sharp. Um, as I said, I got them from Model Fixings in the UK, um, and uh, I mean, if you're if you've used these already, I'm preaching to the converted. But if you haven't, check these out because they they are so much easier. This company as well, I, I'm really impressed with the service. Um, I've ordered a few screws from them recently, and, and uh, bolts and nuts and bolts and stuff, and that, they were great. So um, I'll put a link in the description below the video. Okay, so enough of that. Um, so I've, what I've done is I've spent a bit of time getting these um, plastic tubes which carry the, uh, the, the steel linkages. Um, I'm going to have a, a Z-bend on the servos 
and I will have a, a, a clevis on the, um, on the actual control surface uh, horn. Um, the plastic pipes themselves um, I've taped with a little bit of uh, masking tape just around where it goes through the support and that will just give me a little bit more purchase when I, I just put a little dab of epoxy on those. Um, and I've done the same, just so we can see that, done the same on the tail end here. Just wrapped, um, put a slot in and I've just wrapped uh, um, masking tape around that. Eventually when this is glued in, I will add filler um, to the, the hole and I will use a sharp scalpel and I will cut this flush with the fuselage. So the only thing you'll actually see sticking out um, from the, uh, the covering is the, uh, the control wire itself. Um, still need to cut the control wires to size, but I've spent a lot of time making sure um, that these are a lovely smooth, um, lovely smooth movement, um, lining them up the right height and the right position as to where I want them on the servos. I, I spent quite a bit of time doing that and it's definitely something uh, that's worth spending that little bit of uh, that little bit of extra time on. Um, the uh, let's just turn this round. The the switch I put in the slot for the switch and I put it on the left side. Um, as I said before, it's a, a really well, it's a good quality switch. It's a Vitaba switch, um, and I've put it on the left side because the exhaust is going to be this side. And so any oil, any gunk from the engine will hopefully not go the way of the switch and, and cause a problem. So um, I've got the, uh, the battery. I've made a little bit of a, a, um, a, 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 oops, I'm put that through there. a little bit of a, a, a platform for the, the battery to sit on, and it's going to be um, strapped in like that. Okay, and that just slots in. Let me just turn this around again. It's a bit difficult to see perhaps, but this will just drop down from the top um, and sit in the bottom there. It's not going to be easy to get to, um, but um, it will be it will be accessible if there's a problem, but I'm not envisaging that. Um, so, I'll leave that in there for the moment. Uh, the, the transmitter, I'm planning to put on a, a little bit of uh, sticky Velcro and just put it down into the, uh, into the bottom here, um, out of sight from the, uh, from the windows. And uh, we've got the sensor as well, of course, but uh, I'll find somewhere for that. That can just tuck anyway. So what I'm going to start doing now, oh, I've put in the sorry, put in the uh, the linkage as well for the throttle. So what I need to start doing now is um, epoxying these in um, at the con the control uh, lines, if you like, and then I can start finishing off. I need to um, do the covering on the nose here, um, and also if you remember, I didn't do any of the sheeting on the underside just because I wanted. Um, in, improved access, uh, which, uh, which to be honest, um, there's, there's very good access from the sides in this and I didn't need access from the bottom, so I could have done that, that earlier. Uh, I haven't really given much thought to trying to make the cockpit look like a cockpit, but I keep looking at, uh, I've, I've got a friend who, uh, a friend Jerry, who's got a, a really good YouTube channel and a Facebook group, uh, both of which are called uh, RC Tail Dragging. And he's doing a, a, a wonderful blog at the moment um, with a, a, a Piper Cub, um, a, a lot bigger than this one. And he's done some seats and uh, leather dashboard and it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, so I'm feeling a bit sort of, a bit guilty really that I should be doing something in here, but the servos are quite high in the fuel tank. So I'm probably not going to do anything at all. But if you're really into that scale look, um, check out Jerry's site um, because he's not only done a great interior, but there's other great features about his Cub. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's a really good site to, to go and have a look at. I'll include a couple of links um, to his sites in the description below this video. 
I've now taken in the, the fitting out as far as I can go and um, the next stage now is to move on and do the covering and then put everything in um, in the final place um, ready, to, ready to go. Um, I'll just uh, show you what it looks like here. I know it's quite hard to see um, on the camera but um, I've done the, the linkages um, as we were talking about before where they're lovely and smooth. Um, I've also got the, uh, the, a flexible linkage here which I've put, put in for the throttle which will connect through to this uh, smaller servo um, and you can see on the engine there that just comes through again still got to cut this to length put a Z bend on it but you can see where it's going to go um, I've put in a, a, a Thunder Tiger 25 uh, which I think should be a good engine for this, about the right size. Um, previously I was thinking about putting something a little bit bigger, um, but I think the, the weight, the prop size, the power, uh, just wasn't necessary. This this will be a far, a far better engine. Um, I've got the, uh, the battery down here with the, um, uh, sat on a plate with a, a, a strap, and so that strap in nice and secure now. You can actually get to it in and out through there, I have done it. Petrol tank in, switch. Um, all this will come out now, um, ready for covering. Um, but, uh, but that's about as, as far as we can go. If I just pull out these control rods here, which I haven't cut to length yet, um, and I will show you uh, the rear end. Um, I spoke previously um, about the, uh, the, the control tubes, here they are. I've just cut them off nice and flush, sanded them. Um, a little bit of filling that's needed there just to, to get rid of the, uh, the slot. And um, I'll do that at the same time that I uh, fill up some of these little uh, cross member um, holes here um, that have just occurred because they're, they're a little bit too short on the cross members. So, um, really exciting to be moving on and, uh, and to start to get this covered now.